President Fernandez, thank you for joining us for today. Thank you very much for this opportunity. So the first question I'd like to ask you is, could you tell us about yourself and your personal journey to this point? Uh, well, about myself, I am, uh, I'm, a, I'm, from, I'm a lawyer from Argentina. I'm a diplomat, career diplomat. I'm a judge. So <laughs> I am, uh, in a way, uh, uh, very much associated with uh, law and justice for, as, a, as a professional uh, career and also as my passion. Um, I am from Argentina, and maybe that explains why I'm associated with uh, uh, law and justice. Um, you know, in Argentina, we had a dictatorship in the 70s that created uh, a lot of harm. Many people were killed, many were disappearing. And um, when we returned to democracy, the way to deal with this legacy of abuses was justice. Uh, indeed, uh, the, uh, the new democratic government uh, put a lot of effort in justice. Uh, we had, uh, we put the, the trial, uh, we put the junta trial, the, the, the military juntas in trial in a very historic uh, first trial in 1985. And then actually more proceedings uh, continued after that. So indeed, the way to get out of this horrible past was about justice. And I said uh, this trial was in 1985. At the time of the events, I was a law student. And of course, that had a huge impact on me. The events and then uh, these efforts to put these people on trial. And uh, 10 years uh, after the trial in, uh, in, in Argentina is actually when we started the process of negotiating the creation of the, of the International Criminal Court. It was 1995. I was by then a, a young diplomat in New York. I was the legal advisor of the permanent mission of Argentina in New York. And uh, of course, uh, I had my own convictions and on the importance of justice, having gone through that. But at the same time, of course, uh, Argentina as a country was uh, uh, supporting justice effort at the international level as well. So I got engaged, uh, in, involved in the process of uh, this uh, extraordinary treaty that ended up creating the International Criminal Court. I was very much uh, actively involved in that, in all the negotiating process. In, I was in Rome uh, on 17 July 1998 when we created the court. And then I continued to be involved uh, after that. I was uh, chairing the uh, some uh, uh, the, the drafting of many of these provisions, uh, and then I became uh, part of the court when the court was set up. I was uh, in. Uh, I started to work at the office of the prosecutor, a special advisor to the first prosecutor of the court, and then eventually I came back to the court as a judge, and then uh, I was eventually elected uh, president of the court. And then when I left the court, I couldn't leave the court. <laughs> I couldn't leave the system. I came back uh, three years later as president of the Assembly of State Parties, which is my current uh, position in the system. So uh, uh, to make a long story or a long journey short, I would say that um, I've been uh, focusing on the justice efforts at the uh, international level for most of my, of my adult life, from most of my, my career. Thank you, President Fernandez. Can I ask you, what does the Day of International Criminal Justice mean to you? Well, uh, as I told you, I was in Rome uh, at the diplomatic conference that created this court uh, in June, July 1998. Uh, the 17th of July was the day that we adopted the treaty. It was a fabulous day uh, because uh, even hours before the, the outcome, we didn't know what would happen. Uh, so we created this court, which was like uh, making reality of a dream. The, I always say the ICC, the International Criminal Court, this permanent international institution to prosecute genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity, was an idea seeking to be realized. And we managed to do that on the 17th of July, 1998. So, uh, of course, emotions ran high. It had a huge impact on all our lives, and uh, I don't think 
uh, after that day, we were the same again, and we, most of us, continued to fight for this institution after that. So 25 years down the road, uh, it, it, it brings back all these memories, but also uh, the importance of this, what we have achieved. And then uh, it, in, in addition to nostalgia, we try to use it for the future. It's a way of trying to, ex it's the day that we, we try to explain to others why this is important, why we need to continue fighting for it. Because of course, adopting the treaty 25 years ago was the end of the conference, but was the beginning of another journey. And we are in that journey now. Thank you, thank you. Could you tell us about the assembly of state parties to the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court and the important work that you do? Uh, well, the, the assembly of state parties is indeed uh, the, um, the forum. Uh, they were uh, all state parties to the treaty uh, join. They, uh, we, we gather in the assembly and it is 123 states at this moment which is uh, quite a significant number. It's uh, two-thirds of humanity. Not everybody is in, but uh, it is a significant number. So this is the assembly. All these states that have ratified, joined into the treaty are parties and are parties to the assembly. So, of course, one of the first jobs we do at the assembly is to try to motivate others to join. We need to achieve universal participation in this treaty for, for the court to be... Uh, to be able to deliver to its full potential. Uh, and the Assembly has other very important functions. But by, by basically, uh, we do the oversight of the management of the court. The management, of course, not the judicial uh, part, not the prosecutorial part. This is a court, this is an independent institution, but the Assembly uh, does have a say on, on the management, on the governance, it is the assembly that adopts the budget, that actually uh, funds, uh, uh, contributes to the, uh, with the funds and the resources for the court. It's also the, uh, the assembly that uh, may uh, 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 adopt changes to, to the law of the court, to the legal framework of the court. And uh, we are also, among other functions, ways where we elect the judges of the court. The, uh, the court has 18 judges. Uh, uh, six of them are renewed every three years. Uh, so this year we are we are electing six new judges, and they are all elected for a mandate of nine. So we elect we elect the judges, we elect the prosecutor, we elect uh, the uh, the register of the court. So um, and of course the assembly, in addition to management, elections, legal framework, we also uh, really uh, try to uh, make sure that there is enough cooperation for the court. You know, the court doesn't have an army, it doesn't have a police, it doesn't have intelligence services. It is the assembly and the states that need to provide cooperation for the, uh, for the court. And that is also part of our, of our tasks. Thank you so much. Absolutely fascinating. So how crucial are justice and the rule of law going to be in relation to humanity's survival? How crucial! I would say that um, justice and the rule of law has, uh, I would say, existential importance for humanity. You talked about survival, and I don't think it's it's an exaggeration exaggeration to to use the term, because without law, without justice, um, then humanity goes back to the law of the jungle, where uh, the powerful are the ones dictating what can be done or cannot, cannot be done uh, in, in benefit of their own interests, interests that are also changing, so there is no predictability. So uh, without law and without justice, really, there cannot be any type of cooperation. There can hardly be any type of coexistence. And actually, the rule of law and, the, uh, and justice not only protect individuals, citizens, countries, but it protects the planet. Think of the environment. Uh, think of the need to protect the environment. Without justice, without law, we cannot do that either. So without justice, without law, there is no mankind, there is no planet. Totally agree. Thank you. Can I ask you, could you give us an example of justice and the rule of law having a profound and inspirational impact in relation to humanity's survival? I can give you, I can give you one year 
where um, very, very important things happened. Uh, that also shows that sometimes big crises and, uh, and big massive atrocities can also open the, the, the way to, to do things better. Yeah, I would mention one year, 1948, three years after the Second World War, where we adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. That has had a huge impact on humanity. That has inspired most of the legal systems of the world at the national level, has inspired new instruments at the international level. Thanks to this single instrument, uh, now we all say that we are all equal and that we all have the same freedoms, the same rights. And of course, on that same year, we also adopted a convention to prevent genocide, which is by definition the crime that seeks to exterminate others just because they are part of a group. The Genocide Convention and the Universal Declaration we are celebrating this year, we are celebrating the um, 75th anniversary, 75th anniversary. So we are 75 years down the road still celebrating these huge achievements for humanity. And, by, uh, and, and, and 50 years later after that, we adopted the Rome Statute, the treaty, and that we are celebrating the 25th anniversary now. Now, the, um, this has had huge impact also. The, uh, the, uh, the court is not just, a, it's not a, and, 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 the, and like the Universal Declaration and others, they are not simply abstractions, they are not simply provisions. They are really, th uh, uh, they're really instruments that have an impact on real life. Think of the uh, Rome Statute. Justice is not just about putting people in prison. That is what we think of when we think of criminal justice. But justice is also about addressing the harm suffered by individuals. And the, um, the Rome Statute system is not only about the accused, but it is very much about the victims. And hundreds, thousands of, of victims have already benefited from the system of the court because they also receive reparations from the harm they have received. They can receive compensation for the harm, but also symbolic uh, restitution for what they have lost. So this has a huge impact on humanity. It has a very concrete impact. That's why we need to fight for these type of laws that have really uh, an impact for affected societies, a very direct impact. Can I ask you, given the state of the world, I mean, you, you, you and I have had uh, journeys. I've been on the road for 25 years. I've seen some extraordinary things. But I have to say, President Fernandez, I, I don't think I've ever been more concerned about the state of the world as I am at this particular moment. Um, of course, I have hope and I'll work hard every day. But I wanted to ask you, given the state of the situation, do you have hope that we can still survive? Of course I do. I think um, all those who fight for the promotion of justice and the rule of law, they cannot give up. And, uh, and actually here I'm using the words of uh, an, uh, a passionate advocate of justice, which, uh, which was Ben Ferencks. Ben Ferencks was a prosecutor at the uh, Nuremberg trials. And then uh, he continued to fight for justice since those uh, early days after the Second World War. And he just passed uh, a few months ago. And uh, he was say saying never give up until, until the moment he left us uh, when he was past 100. Um, and uh, of course, uh, the, 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 we need to be hopeful, but also we, I see hope because I see that even in the middle of the current circumstances, which are indeed very, very worrying, and I understand why we all feel um, very much the, uh, the pain of what's going on now and saying, well, all that we have achieved in decades of fighting for peace and justice, is this going to survive? Well, actually, in the middle of these circumstances that we are living in now, I see that actually there are more efforts, more justice efforts than ever going on. Um, 
Of course, uh, I'm talking about, for instance, what the proceedings at the International Criminal Court are multiplying. They, they are investigating and prosecuting in several situations around the world. But in addition to this, this is a court that was created 25 years ago, but in addition to this, I see more and more states willing to uh, also exercise jurisdiction, also to prosecute and investigate this type of atrocities at the national level. More and more states, and we have seen this recently, more and more states are willing to exercise universal jurisdiction to uh, investigate and prosecute themselves. And in order to assist these investigations, they, we are creating new mechanisms to make sure that they have the evidence. So there are these new international mechanisms for Syria, for Myanmar, in order to collect the evidence, preserve the evidence, and give the evidence to uh, those who can investigate and prosecute further. And uh, so we see uh, there is an emergence of, uh, of a global system of justice. It's not just about the court. It, I think we have realized 25 years uh, down the road from since the creation of the court, we have realized that we need to combine all our efforts. We need to put all our work together to that end. And more and more things are happening at this very moment. That's why um, I think there is room for optimism in, uh, because, yes, we are in a very difficult situation. Yes, we see a lot of fragmentation and hostility. But yes, we are also redoubling our efforts on the other way, on the other sense to get more, more cooperation for justice. So it's not just that I'm optimist. I think there are concrete examples that can be given to say, don't give up. Thank you so much and completely agree. What advice would you give to a young person who is thinking of going into a legal profession? First of all, I think I would congratulate that young person for choosing a profession, a profession that can be extremely rewarding uh, for their for their lives. They can do a lot with uh, with law in order to contribute to a better better world. Now, I so first of all, I would congratulate them. Then I would advise them to be as good as they can be and to study as hard as they can do, because and they, to choose the area and uh, uh, they, in which they could be interested and really study hard. And then try to use the skills they are going to obtain by doing so through studies and training to use their skills to try to contribute to a better world, to identify the areas that need protection, that need more rules, that need their skills, and try to defend that. And, uh, and I would say that they should never think of the law as something abstract as uh, some simply some kind of intricate set, set of provisions that only lawyers can understand. Behind all these words, behind all these technicalities, there is a reality and they should always keep this reality in mind. They should always keep a contact with the real world and make the link between this law and what is behind because it's worth doing that and it is the way to, uh, to really achieve more justice. Thank you so much. Um, is there anything that individuals can do to support justice and the strong rule of law? A non-lawyer can do a lot to support uh, justice and to support peace. Uh, the uh, justice and law is not just uh, something for lawyers. As I said, it is linked to reality. So every citizen in the world has the possibility, and I would say the shared responsibility, of identifying areas that need protection, identify areas that need more rules, more justice, and they have the right and, again, the responsibility to demand from their politicians, from their organizations, to demand that something be done. And they can do this in several ways. They can do it individually, but they can also do it by, by joining others in groups, in organizations, sometimes some simply by signing some uh, petitions, but they can do a lot to actively promote these ideas. 
Uh, and of course, they need to first try to be informed about what's going on, about what's going on in the world. Uh, try to to get out of their own zone of comfort to try to see what's happening outside that and then join efforts with others. I think each one of us can do something and we should be doing something. Thank you. Lastly, how can people support the assembly of state parties to the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court? And where do we find more information? Well, uh, this the um, uh, again uh, the one uh, the first way of uh, supporting is to try to know more. So, um, if you have the opportunity, the court is uh, has its seats uh, headquarters at, in the Hague in the Netherlands. A beautiful premises that uh, if you can visit, they're worth being visited because then you can l learn more about the the court, what is the work they're doing. The, you can even. Uh, attend some of the proceedings to see how that works. But of, the, of course, you can also visit the court digitally. Uh, you can visit the website of the court where you have a lot of information about the proceedings, the situation that they are, they are, they are being investigated, about the assembly of state parties, what are, what are they doing. The assembly uh, does a lot of work and it is also reflected in the website. Uh, and also, if you are a student, for instance, uh, you or you can uh, you can participate uh, in uh, internship programs. Uh, you can, if you are a professional, you have you can also uh, there is a, a program for visiting professionals at the court. Uh, so there are various ways by which you can uh, participate in the work of the court. So I would say, first of all, visit the website of the court. And, and they will, there's a lot of information of all, all the things that uh, were in which uh, individuals can get uh, involved. President Fernandez, thank you so much for your time today. Absolutely fascinating. And we wish you the very best with all your incredible work. I thank you. Thank you very much for contributing to uh, give visibility to, to justice on, on Justice Day. Thank you so much.